one live. Hello, everyone. Um, is it on? Let's see. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Amanda Seto. <laughs> Let me just, um, there we go. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Amanda Seto with New Grad Optometry. I'm excited to be here with Emily Seitz, also known as iSites on Instagram. And today we're going to be talking about the NBO boards. Mm -hmm. Before we get started, I wanted to thank our dedicated partners, Essilor and Johnson & Johnson Vision, for supporting New Grad Optometry since its inception. So check out EssilorPro.com for more resources from Essilor and JNJVisionPro.com for more resources from Johnson & Johnson. So we'll go ahead and get this YouTube Live started. Uh, it's our very first episode, so we're talking NBO boards, especially part one tonight. Wow. Emily has been studiously preparing for them. So Emily, how are you feeling about it? What's going on in your mind? It's coming up. Yeah, so we're probably like about a month out from mm -hmm. part one of, of boards. Um, a little nervous, which I which I think is pretty normal. Um, but at the same time, I feel incredibly prepared. I feel like boards is really that time when you realize you're so capable because you're pulling all the information in and you're applying it clinically and you're looking at it with a different perspective for the first time and revisiting like some of those concepts that you haven't touched in a while, like optics, which you might take like first year. Um, right. But then you go into clinic and now you're going back to optics again and you're making new connections. So. I would say I'm probably like a little nervous, but I'm also really excited and feeling really empowered to like do this next chapter and kind of get it over with and, and keep on going. Oh, that sounds about right. I mean, it's coming up, so it sounds like you're feeling the right things right now. <laughs> um, when did you start preparing for it? How long has it been since you've been yeah. studying? Um, so I've been preparing I, I got all of my materials probably like in October, but I would say I didn't really honestly start diving into the material until around like January, um, kind of over Christmas break too, actually, when I had some time that I was finally able to like concentrate just on boards instead of, you know, all the finals that we had going on and, and being in clinic and all the chaos that was trying to finish up like mm -hmm. our didactic coursework. Um, I felt like over Christmas break when I had time to, to be like, okay, now I'm gonna actually focus on it was when I really started to um, focus on it more and, and start preparing for it. Gotcha, very cool. And what are you using primarily to study? Right yeah, now? so the most common thing that I think like test prep material that students use is KMK. Um, that also kind of ties into how I kind of started preparing for it um, because KMK offers some different options. They offer kind of their, um, like basic package where you have all access to videos and flashcards and practice problems and like little small like mm -hmm. mock exams. Um, I actually decided to go with their newer plan, which is like the signature plan. And the reason mm -hmm. why, is because if anyone knows me, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I am like everywhere all the time. Like earlier this week, we were just talking before this live feed and I was in um, Florida earlier this week for Transitions Academy. So. Mm -hmm. I needed something that was basically, you know, someone telling me like study this on this date and you will like, you know, meet the end goal. Um, so that's the option that I ended up going with. And it's, it's nice cause it's a lot of structure. Um, after this, actually, I have like a, a live stream that I'm going to go on to for KMK to watch their extra videos. Um, but it's a really nice option. For one, it keeps me organized. It also gives me like extra videos and pushes you to make the connections. If you feel like you can't make them on your mm -hmm. own. Um, so like I was saying, like, I feel like, you know, sometimes when you hear the material for the first time, you're just like absorbing the information. You're like, okay, that's an iris. Okay, I get it. That's Ganeo. But you're not ready yet to make those clinical connections. Um, so KMK kind of steps in and does that for you and pushes you like one step beyond the text to actually make the connection so you can apply it in a lot of different ways. Right. I mean, that makes sense. I, I didn't have all those luxuries when I took 
the KMK class because I graduated in 2016. But even with what they had at the time, I mean, they had like a very strict schedule and they did have some videos, not as much as what they have now and not as many like quizzes and flashcards yeah. as now. But um, with all that they had at that time and a little bit of help from like class notes as well. Um, I, I made it happen, but there was also at that time Berkeley optometry books. Okay. Um, did you have you heard about that? I've heard of them, but I haven't used I haven't used them, and I haven't heard of anyone else that has used them. Yeah, I didn't actually. I bought them, but I didn't even open mm -hmm. them. But um, yeah, I stuck mostly with KMK and a little bit of Opto Prep as well. Have you? Yeah, been, I uh, Opto Prep. I haven't gone through it yet because I feel like Opto Prep really is a great resource to test yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that a lot of the OptoPrep questions are very similar to the ones and similar in the style that they ask on boards. Um, so probably, honestly, in the next couple of weeks is when I'll start diving into OptoPrep questions and, and kind of tackling it from that aspect. Yeah, well. that's probably best because you want to, you know, want you want to answer those questions after yeah. you've read over the material and studied. So definitely, yeah, that's a good plan, Emily. <laughs> Have you been using your class notes at all? Have you found them helpful? I think for some subjects, um, you know, our ocular biology was taught primarily off um, le uh, clinical anatomy from uh, Leanne Remington. Um, mm -hmm. So Remington's book is amazing. Um, I'll reference that. And then for a lot of like the anatomy things that I'm, I'm a little, you know, uh, wishy-washy on because they put it together in such a I don't know. It's like you're literally like reading a bedtime story. <laughs> I feel like you could just sit there and, and read Remington um, and KMK borrows like a lot of information from from their book as well. So I, I've used the class book um, that was recommended for our coursework. I think especially for optics too, we're one of the we're one of the schools that uses U plus D equals V kind of like I don't know. Oh yeah. That's, that's rare. Yeah, I don't know if it's an older notation. Um but it's what I'm really comfortable with. And we had a great foundation in the optics education that we got. So that is definitely one that um, our professors have put together some PowerPoints in different subjects. So when it comes to optics and contact lenses, those are the class notes I feel like I really want to refer to. And then also um, mm -hmm. a little randomly, but visual our visual perception professor taught it in a very clear way. And I was actually I was actually studying that today, and that's kind of like you know like contrast sensitivity function. It's like not mm -hmm. the most exciting parts of optometry. Um, but they taught it in a very clear way. And sometimes when you do have those class notes that are organized in such a fashion, you know, you go back and you're like, okay, I, I learned it in this initial way. So sometimes it's nice to look at it again and just be able to learn it, relearn it, I would say like a lot quicker by using those references that you already put time into creating. So yeah, I think with those three subjects, like optics, um, visual perception, contact lenses, and then also I'd add probably ocular biology. Those are the ones that I revisit kind of my class notes for. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the same for me as well. I was definitely using a lot of the class notes from optics because we had an amazing optics professor yeah. who I'm not sure is still there. Um, and then the I got the book for uh, the visual perception, so that helped as well. Um, and then, of course, Leanne Remington. She... She's amazing. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, those those three. I, I pretty much didn't use any other class notes or, or books besides I, KMK. <laughs> I did. I did make actually some pharmacology charts when I was going through um, our anterior segment course, and I found those actually to be incredibly accurate. Now we covered many more drugs than are on the board's outline, so some of it's a little extra. But um, I feel like I, I organize it in a really nice way that it's it's nice to go back and refer to it because it's all I set it up in like an Excel chart. Um, so yeah, if anyone would like an, a copy of it, um, <laughs> I'm share it. But but yeah, I, I feel like actually there are a lot of resources from my own class notes that I've actually gone back and revisited more than I thought I would, but it's been nothing but God. helpful to do so. <laughs> and then what's your study schedule look like, like with your classes and your, you know, regular workload and clinics and like any social activity you can muster in between? Yeah. How do you have time to study or is it weekends mostly? Yeah, so PTO is actually 
a lot different probably than most of the core the the schools in optometry um you know historically we used to actually be starting our rotations right now um so we used to start um, a semester early and, and we'd be traveling and starting and, and working regular mm -hmm. shifts at our first rotation site. Um, last year, they actually changed that for our students. Um, so they had to stay on campus and we're following the same suit now. Um, but I think, I think in that, in that time frame, they decided, you know, we had already been prepared to finish our coursework by the end of last semester. So when I was talking to some of the other um, students at transitions that were at school, um, in school right now, they're kind of saying, oh, like we're taking like our last binocular function, we're taking low vision, we're taking our neuro classes, and those are all things that we had taken actually last semester. Um, so right now, really, the courses that we're in is um, just some reviews. Uh, they are professors will hold review sessions for like the topics I was saying, like optics, contact lenses, pharmacology, ocular biology. Those will be like on Thursdays and Fridays. And then um, Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays will be scheduled for primarily just like one clinic shift. So for me, my schedule kind of looks like one clinic shift a week. Um, the rest of the days are pretty much free. And then Thursdays and Fridays, I'll come into school and I'll sit through our professor's lectures. Um, but it's so it, it has honestly opened up a, a lot of time for me to study. Um, and I honestly think that that's that's what they really say about boards is it's just about having the time and the and the preparation. Um, but even then, some you know, it takes a good deal of um, you know responsibility to take advantage of all the time that you do have. Um, but yeah. I think it's, it's definitely, definitely. Made it and to be mot motivated enough to study yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely helping make it more manageable. Um, but you know, I think in that in that realm, when you have so much time, you know, you almost need to make sure that you're taking breaks and taking. You know, things do still doing things to make sure that you're, you know, maintaining good mental health and physical health. So, um, my boyfriend and I are in optometry school together. Um, we met in optometry school, but you know, we kind of like look out for each other. We'll make dinner together. Like tomorrow, I'm gonna, he's like, go to your yoga class. So tomorrow, I'm gonna go to yoga in the morning. Um, just reminding each other to just like take good breaks and and still maintain good health and good attitude to going forward in the in the last month here. Yeah, no, definitely, that's very important. So, are you guys in the same class together, studying together? We are. Yeah, we're in the same class. Um, we were friends first, and then we started dating. But yeah, so it's it's been really nice to go through it with someone like so close to you. Um, yeah, it's good to have extra support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether that be friends or whether, you know, it's a significant other, it's nice to know. I mean, like optometry school itself is just such a hard thing to communicate to other people from the outside, which is kind of like why I started eyesights. But, you know, it's it's really nice to have someone that knows exactly what you're going through. I was talking to my sister when I was home for Christmas break because I had gone to Starbucks and I was like gone for like six hours. And it was like 8 p.m. and like she called me and she's like, are you coming home? And I was like, yeah, I was like, I've just been studying. And she's like, well, you need to take a break. Like you've been studying for all day. Like that's way too long. And I thought about it and I was like, yeah, I mean, it is long, but it's not long to me. You know, I think in terms mm -hmm. of like of tips, you know, you definitely have to knowing that, you know, the exam is eight hours long you do have to build up like that tolerance. At first, like when you go at it, it's like studying feels like, oh, I'm so tired at the end of the day. I've spent like, you know, four hours here studying. But then it's just something that you gradually build towards. And so one of the things I was telling my sister is I was like, yeah, I think it, it can seem like I'm studying a long time, but it's not like a long time for me. You know, I think once you get into that habit of being able to build up kind of like that tolerance of, of studying more for longer periods of time and being engaged for longer periods of time, it definitely becomes easier. So that's like a goal I think I think is nice to work towards. No, definitely. It's a long, long exam and it's so draining. I remember when I finished it, I just like took it, I went home and I took a nap right away because <laughs> yeah. my brain was fried from so many questions. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what are you finding like the hardest subjects to prepare for? Yeah, I think um, I think the hardest ones I'm going through right now are probably is probably pharmacology. Um, pharmacology and optics, I think, are the ones that I'm finding the most challenging. Um, I think the KMK does a pretty good job, actually, though. Again, like tying it in clinically. 
Um, you know, and it, it's, it's a, especially when it comes to something like, like pharmacology, that is so much memorization. Mm -hmm. You really need like that clinical application to apply it. And then this is something that's kind of unique, but I think that if you're, you know, if you're a year out and, and you're watching this and you're not worried about taking boards, or, you know, for a while, I think a really good tip, this is something that I recommend if anyone has an emergency service in like their college of optometry to literally volunteer to work in there. Um, I was scheduled for emergency a lot more than some of my classmates, but I feel like it was really the place where I learned to apply like pharmacology. Um, so I think that definitely helped to make me a little stronger in that area. But I think just, you know, pharmacology, the beast that it is, it's always going to be like one of the most difficult things to tackle until you feel really comfortable with it and you apply it all the time. Right. I mean, I definitely remember the the buckets that Kyle from KMK would come up with. Yeah. So that definitely <laughs> helped me a lot. And I still think of them even now as a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like in some ways he just like simplified it for me, mm -hmm. um, but it is a difficult subject and there's so many, you know, so many medications that don't fall into those buckets that are on the exam. So I understand. And same with, you said optics too was difficult, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. That was the hardest for me. <laughs> I really enjoy optics. I think it's just, um, you know, the trends that, I think the trends are something that I'm going to have to wrap my head around um, trends with RGPs. I was struggling with like base curve the other day. So I think, you know, just recognizing what areas you struggle with the most is important. So you can go back and spend a little bit more time in those areas than, than others. Yeah. What are you finding easiest so far? Oh, I your favorite subjects. The ocular disease is by far just my favorite. I don't know. I just, I, know. I, I like the most interesting one. I like <laughs> physiology as well. Uh, I think my brain works really well with knowing mechanism of action. Like once I understand like why something's set up to work the way it works, like, I don't know, like say like this, the potassium pumps or like, um, you know, bicarb and active secretion. Um, I feel like once mm -hmm. I understand how that works on that level, then I feel like I can apply it a little bit better. And, and it's not so much memorization, it's just understanding. Uh, so I think once you can learn it from, from at least when I can learn it from that aspect, I feel like it's less, it's less like I'm sticking it in my brain and it's just one more thing that has, has to fit and it's more of application and, and that solid foundation that I can just keep building on top of. Gotcha. Well, that, that's good. I'm, I'm excited for you. Once you have this over with, you're just going to feel so relieved. <laughs> I keep thinking about the, like how great I'll feel when I'm when I'm finished with it. I, I know. I, well, there's part two. I mean, in part three, but those are yeah. those are definitely easier. I, I felt that they were easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you have any tips for those that are preparing for part one right now? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, first off, I, it maybe some more advice that I'm telling myself. <laughs> but if you're in your shoes, I, my shoes at least, um, I think it's important to just stay calm. Like we still have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. We have like a month still. And if you think about that, that's it's more than enough time to make sure that you're reaching your end goal. Um, you know, skimming through the areas that you feel like you're a little weaker on. Um, there's plenty of time to test yourself and test your knowledge. I think that's something I also need to really work with because I'm the type of person that feels like, Oh no, like I need to know it thoroughly before I open up Optoprep or before I you know, take some questions. I was really down on myself the other day because I ended up getting like a 67 on one of like the optics parts. Um, and, and I just felt like really disappointed. But at the same time, like that feeling should in no way stop you from continuing to test yourself because that is really how you learn. And that's how you make foundational, co like those concepts stick. If you wait and wait and wait until the end to test yourself, then you'll never be able to build on top of that. You'll just feel like you're starting out. And so I think that's, a, that's what I'm telling myself. And if anyone, if anyone feels the same, Help yourself now, test your knowledge, ask other people to challenge you. I think that, you know, when you, when you put someone else in charge of, you know, challenging you with, with something, it's uncomfortable to not know it at first, but it helps you a lot when, when you can, 
you know, when you can apply it and come back and say, you know what, I don't know the answer right now. Let me go ahead and look it up. Let me put a little bit of time into it. I'll come back. And I think from that point forward, you'll never forget it. Yeah. Do you find yourself studying um, like mostly with your boyfriend or are you in a study group with other friends as well? You know, I actually, we don't study, <laughs> we don't study together per se. <laughs> um, we study like with each other. So, so we'll go to like the library together. Um, but we haven't done any like group review yet. It's something that we talked about doing. Um, there's some videos that we'll watch together. Um, actually, actually, technically, yeah, he's going to come over later and we're going to watch the live stream together. So we do little things like that. Um, we talked in the like towards the end the last coming months especially when we're kind of burnt out we want to do a fun like kind of like game night and have like a ton of questions um i've been building since since we were like in school i've been building like this ocular pathology uh, like powerpoint where basically it's like a picture of a disease and it's like a quiz that you can go through and test yourself based on just a picture like tell a story um yeah, so that's a good idea <laughs> It, make it a little bit more fun, but also, you know, practical and, and still having us like go towards that end goal. And I think through social media too, there's been a lot of people that like I've reached out to and been able to connect with from different schools, mm -hmm. like um, Michelle from Western. We were just like sending each other like different materials that we thought of. Like I sent her my pharmacology drug chart and she sent me a couple other materials um, that she's using for studying. So, you know, even though we're not technically together, you know, we have that virtual support and, you know, it's nothing but positive. Everyone's in this together. We're all rooting for one another to pass um, so we can just keep going on and becoming awesome doctors one day. So, yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> No, I, I have studied alone for, I was in a study group when I was in school, but it just, I don't know, we'd get too distracted. We'd end up talking about food or I don't know, yeah. <laughs> gossiping. So yeah. I actually like um, took myself out of the group and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to study alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that worked better for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone, I mean, everyone has a preference. So some people love to study in groups. Some people just want to be on their own. So. I like a mix of both. I feel like, you know, I feel like the benefits of a group, if it's the right group, you know, right. like, and, you're, and you know, it's not group where you feel like 25% of your time is studying and 75% is doing other things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like once you find the right group, um, it can work really well. Uh, sometimes just hearing someone else explain it a different way um, just adds another dimension, like to the way that you're able to learn it. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the, one of the advice that, uh, one of the pieces of advice that Kyle gave was, you know, KMK is like one resource, but if you can add more dimensions and you can build on top of it from class notes or from, you know, other people explaining things and, and how they understand something, um, that's where you really start to, you know, really excel is when you can hear it multiple times from multiple different people in multiple different ways. And it'll just really just build a foundation. For application that kyle he's so wise i know, I know. It's, it's funny. like so they also come in for live lectures for those who aren't familiar with kmk they'll come in and teach different parts of the books and, and go through pretty much like 80 percent of the material um and so much of it was just like great advice just you know you know just very empowering which you know i think you appreciate it can be a very scary thing to take a standardized test and a lot of people just have this fear. I, I had to retake my OAT. So even just feeling like, you know what, here's another standardized test. Like, you know, you, it makes you feel a certain way, but I feel like it's really important to have everyone else like that has done it and gone through the process, give you pieces of information that are, will help you succeed. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully that works out as well. For me, so. Yeah, I mean, even when I was studying, he would also come to to Western to do the live lectures. He was so pumped and so excited about it. It was almost contagious. Like I would love learning about the topics, even though if someone else had taught it in, in a monotone voice, I probably yeah. wouldn't have cared less. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with Kyle, it was just more interesting. And actually, all the instructors were always very excited and pumped up. Yeah. So um, definitely helps to have that extra motivation and <laughs> energy. Yeah. What advice do you have for all of us going forward here? Um, well, let's see. Let me think. Well, for me, a big thing was I would get distracted pretty easily. Um, 
on my phone mostly. So um, I would actually leave it in another room whenever I was studying and I'd only check it like during breaks once in a while. Mm -hmm. And even on the, like even when I was on my computer, cause you know, we had some videos, not as much as you guys have now, mm -hmm. um, but we had some KMK videos on the computer. I would also get distracted with social media. So I blocked like Facebook, Instagram, shopping websites, like Nordstrom. Yeah. <laughs> I like wouldn't allow myself to go on those. Yeah. Um, and then for me, I mean, everyone learns differently, but I learn the best when I write things down. Mm -hmm. So I brought like, I think I bought like a dozen notebooks and I pretty much wrote out both of the KMK books in those wow. notebooks. <laughs> Um, and that helped me a lot. Just reviewing something that was written in my own handwriting helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, and then what? Oh, and then I would love to draw the diagrams. I, I got like this huge post-it that I would hang on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a pack of this like ginormous post-it for your wall. Yeah. So I would draw like, you know, the, the diagrams you do like for the NPCE and the, you know, the iris and the stroma and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I would just keep adding on to it um, with each lecture. So pretty much like my walls were covered with these ginormous post-its oh <laughs> that I would review all the time. Yeah. Um, else is I'll there? A photo, like literally to the right of me, you guys can't see it right here, but I have like, I have like the circle of Willis drawn out. I have like a parasympathetic nervous system. And these are like notes from, from when I was just like taking my classes, but. Yeah, for, for, for people that are visual learners, I feel like KMK is, is really good at that. Um, yeah, and yeah. you can look at those notes and review them like pretty much anytime you want. So it helps yeah. when they're when they're all over the walls. <laughs> yeah, escape them. And then what else was there? That's pretty much it. I, I stuck to the schedule, kind of like how you're doing. Um, Sometimes I would fall behind, but they gave us like these catch up days. So I would always yeah. catch up on those days. Um, and then I was just like very confident in myself when I took the exam. I remember like, you know, leaving my car and I was like, I'm going to pass this today. There's no ifs, ands or buts about it. Like it's going down today. <laughs> um, so I think it's really important to have just a positive, relaxed mindset. Like don't be nervous during the yeah. exam you've done so much preparation already like you're bound mm -hmm. to do well with you know all the preparation you've done um and then take your time because there's actually so much time in that exam right. uh, like there's no need to rush through it you know read the questions a couple times don't just read it once because they're tricky okay. um and just take the full eight hours even though that sounds like a nightmare just take yeah. your time <laughs> And I wouldn't even bring, I, I wouldn't even bring any notes with you on the day of because at that point, like, there's nothing that's gonna stick in your mind. Yeah. On the day of, even yeah. the day before, you should definitely rest, relax, yeah. watch a movie. Yeah. Get a massage, maybe. <laughs> I'll probably have to. I feel like yeah. my neck will be like so stiff at that point. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Just to get to the exam, we'll have to work through that. <laughs> Do you have any um, any tips for students that are taking part one next year if you could go back in time? Yeah, um, you know, I think I think if I could do it again, I did do the signature, but I didn't get started until much later. Um, I think it was just because I felt like really overwhelmed with taking regular schoolwork and also trying to fit that in. And, you know, no one else was really doing it at the time, like at my school, or I didn't feel like anyone was. So it didn't feel like to me, it was like something major that I needed to start on right away. But I think that really, I would have loved to have done it like from the, from the book, like day one, like start it and followed it exactly. Um, I also would have loved to form a study group, like at my school of those that were taking this, doing the signature program. So we could hold each other a little bit more accountable and like keeping each other like on, you know, on point with that. Um, but I think those are the two main things that I wish I really would have done. It's like, like we've been saying, you know, it's kind of more about preparation. And I think that I, I just would have liked to have like more time with it again, like not worried. I think there's still plenty of time. Um, but I think, you know, more time doesn't hurt. Um, 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, it all, it goes by so quickly. Also like, you know, just making sure you're doing well in school, focusing on what you're learning. Um, because, you know, as your professors teach you, I know like you'll learn some things and be like, mm, I'm never going to use that one day. <laughs> you might not, but you might use it for boards. So try and, you know, look at the different subjects and view them in a clinical perspective and, you know, push yourself to think, how can I apply this with the patient one day, you know, what would this look like if I was sitting in the exam room and they were sitting across from me, you know, what kind of, you know, problem would they come in with that I would need to find the answer to this question. So mm -hmm. if you can kind of start to look at it from that perspective, I think that'll only help you become more prepared when it's time to apply it. And just know that, you know, this definitely is like, like you were saying, you went into the exam, you're like, I'm prepared. It's my time to shine and show off and show everyone what I can do. I think it's very much the same, you know, this is a chance to show how, you know, how, how much you've learned while you've spent your time here in school. And I feel like even now, like over the last like month, I've just been very strong in clinic because I've been pushing myself and, and pushing to apply everything that I'm learning in from, from this preparation for board examination. So yeah, I think that's, that's probably like the tips I have going forward and, you know, if I could do it again, but also, you know, doing it from here on out, what, what that'll look like. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I didn't start the, uh, the class exactly when, you know, when they started, I started it like later on, I think like in January, uh, as you, so I think, you know, starting it from the very beginning is better because you get to look at the material a couple of times instead of just one time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then some people have recommended, I don't even know if this is like feasible to get the, the KMK books, like from year one and then use them as mm -hmm. like study guides to help when you're you know actually in those classes so you already have like yeah. notes in them and you're already like pretty well you know versed in how you know kmk presents everything so i mean yeah. that's just something i've heard but i don't know if i would do that <laughs> i don't know if i would do that either i feel like I feel like then I would just look at everything I was learning in school just to pass boards. Exactly. And, you know, like, I don't know that that's necessarily the lens through which, like, you want to absorb all of your material. Exactly, but, yeah. You know, I, I just, like, heard a couple people saying yeah. that. But. I even thought about that, too. I even thought, like, back in the summertime, I was like, oh, I'm going to ask someone for their, like, boards book and, like, study. And honestly, the truth of it is there's just so much going on, like while you're still in classes and in your courses and taking your didactic, that it, it is really hard to, you know, balance both and like set time aside. Um, and, and I think there's a place for class, what you learn in class and a place for what you learn to prepare for board, the board examinations. Um, you know, a lot of overlap, but you know, just, just do your best in, in, in preparing for both. And I think, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, you'll be fine, Emily. I'm sure you're going to do great. It's the end of March, right? Yeah. March okay. 21st. March 21st. That's the big day. That's my date. That's my date. We were talking <laughs> earlier. We were laughing because I thought I was taking it on day two. And I found out, like, literally earlier this week, like, uh, two days ago, that I was taking it on day three. But <laughs> neither here nor there. You know, it'll come. It'll go. It doesn't mm -hmm. make a difference. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Well, you're going to do great. Just be confident yeah. in yourself. <laughs> and uh, we look forward for good news, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us, Emily. We wish you the best of luck from all of the new grad team. We all love you. <laughs> thank you so, so much for letting me come on here and share what it's like to be a student going through the process. Yeah, Definitely. of course. It had to be you, Emily. <laughs> I will keep you guys updated with how everything is going from here on yeah. out. Okay? Keep us updated. Good luck to you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.